Good evening. I'm Peter Reznicek from ShadowTrader.net. This is another edition of the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, August 15th, 2021. Obviously, new studio. Very excited to bring this to you. Uh, usually, you see me sitting uh, in the chair next to my trading rig with all the big screens uh, next to me. This is a new studio that I've created just for these videos. I'm really excited to bring it to you. Uh, first thing you probably notice is the huge touchscreen behind me. It's an 85-inch Dell accent on the word touchscreen. It's a touchscreen TV, which makes it really exciting because I'm going to be able to be shooting all kinds of training videos with it where I'm going to be standing at the screen. And instead of doing it old school with a whiteboard, I'm actually going to be drawing on that screen right there. So it's going to be really cool. I'm excited to bring you that. Look for those videos soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to be shooting the Shadow Trader Video Weekly each weekend right here from this desk. Uh, and kind of going back and forth between me talking to you guys and the charts that uh, you're going to see on the laptop here. I think all in all, you're going to like this better. It's going to be a much more dynamic uh, setup, uh, much more exciting for lack of a better word. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Definitely leave me some feedback down in the comments and tell me what you think. Dancing on the edge. What exactly do I mean by that? I like to give these videos really creative titles that to me, showcase what happened in the market that particular week. Just kind of be a little bit uh, creative with it. Anybody could call their video market wrap up for the week of August 15th, whatever. I think that's extremely boring and it doesn't really tell you what's going on. So I hope you notice the theme here that every single week, the title of my video is always alluding to the price action that I saw over the week that just passed. So this video, Dancing on the Edge, is specifically called that because it seems to me from a technical level and more importantly from the context that I'm seeing under the hood, because I'm trading actively every day, it seems to me that the market is really just kind of dancing on edge here. And it's really pushing it to the limits as far as it can go without any sort of liquidation break. So in this video, I'm going to show you some technicals, especially on the SPX, where we're bumping up against the top end of a channel, which not a lot of people pay attention to. I always tell people that they should draw both types of trend lines, not just along the bottom, but also along the top, creating channels, because there's some really good market generated information to be gleaned from that. So I'm going to show you that I'm also going to be showing you some divergence between the NDX and the Russell. NDX actually had a very interesting week this week because it kind of picked up steam. It was showing a lot of relative weakness uh, up until a couple of days ago, and then the baton kind of passed, and all of a sudden the NASDAQ strengthened up a bit. But at the same time as it strengthened up, it didn't really do much. It, I don't feel that it did enough to show and prove. But we'll look at those charts regardless, talk about the Russell as well. And then to cap it all off, what is going on with the profile? The profile is very interesting now because pursuant to everything I just said where I feel like the market is dancing on edge, obviously Friday made a new all-time high. The problem with that is, is that that is as far as most people's analysis go, especially people who are not actively involved in the markets. All they want to hear is that the market made a new high that day, or if it's down, they just want to see it down just a little. They're not looking at context. And when I show you what the market profile distribution of the S&P futures on the ES, which is what we always look at on the profile. When I show you what that looked like on Friday, I hope that you come away with it with probably the same thing that I'm thinking is it's just not the type of day uh, that should accompany a new all time high. So this is our SPX daily. And here's exactly what I was talking about that I wanted to point out to you when I said we're riding the channel. Notice that you can you have an area here of congestion and you come over here and then here's where it gets interesting where look at all these days that we've been just riding the top of the channel. Okay, this is really, really interesting. And again, this is something that I talked about in the past that I urge people to do all the time. If you look at this chart closely that I'm talking about right here, you notice that it's really drawn at the top of price action first and then I move the channel down as you can see here to see where it connects on the bottom. It's really not about this uh, bottom part here at all. It's really not about that at all. And most people only draw trend lines from the lows because they just look at essentially the trend line. They want to see how it's ascending. But what's, what I'm talking about here, which I feel is much more important, is the fact that we are just sitting at the top of this channel and not budging. And generally, if you look back historically, when markets do that, they will fall off. You have these situations where they just kind of ride the channel like this and they do fall off. So it is in important to note that the potential at least is there for the market uh, to come in a bit. Now the NDX is kind of singing a different tune. Here's where things get really interesting. The NDX is an index that I watch very, very closely, mostly because I trade a lot of Fangman plus T 
in day trading and also in my weekly options advisory. This is sort of my universe. It's relatively small, the playground that I like to play in, uh, so to speak. The NDX looks different because it's not really overextended. As you can see from the chart right here, it's actually looking pretty healthy. It looks like it actually may want to break out higher, but one of the things that I've been looking at is the fact that if that was the case, if it was so strong, why is it continually just riding this 20 period moving average here, okay, where there's very, very short time between the amount of time that you have a touch and then you have another touch and you have another touch and you have another touch. Generally, a market that's stronger will have time elapsed in between the areas where it touches the 20. Like here, notice it'll touch and then it'll stay away from the 20 for a while, come in break, et cetera, right? If, if it's in a trend, trending uh, situation, like here you can see the amount of time has passed. So here, I just wanted to point out to people that I think it's very interesting and maybe slightly problematic that we are getting these multiple touches here. So if the NDX is gonna do something, it's gonna need to break out pretty soon. Now, the Russell, as always, being the wild card that it is, is doing absolutely nothing. And on Friday, it showed a lot of relative weakness and actually started to break down. In and of itself, this is not that big of a signal. Remember, everything that we talk about in these videos, because I bring you so much analysis that is so in-depth, right? If you, if you think about it, when you, you've watched these videos for a while, the analysis that I do is extremely in-depth. And the way I define the depth of the analysis to me is how many data points do you bring forward, okay? And you bring all of those data points forward and they form your narrative and However many of those data points are all pointing in one direction, that's the bias, okay? So remember, this Russell weakness is just one data point. Some people think that these small caps are a leader. I don't think they're leading much of anything right now. I think if you look at the chart, it's probably, it's very clear to see that this middle third of the range is where they are. They've been stuck for a while, but at some point there's gonna be a larger move in the small caps as this huge consolidation area breaks in one direction or the other, and that will probably go hand in hand with a bigger move in the entire broad market as well. Okay, now taking a quick tour through Fang Man Plus T. Here's where some things get kind of interesting because there's some relative strength in some stocks, some relative weakness in others. And I really believe that it would be very hard for the NASDAQ 100 to do anything independent of these particular stocks that I'm about to show you. So let's take a look at Facebook. First thing that jumps out at me is the fact that it's clearly a lower high. It's clearly a lower high and looks to be potentially rolling over. So the game for next week is going to be to see if it holds this trend line or not. Or actually, you know, obviously it could, it could decide to do the opposite and just sort of dribble higher from here. Okay, now let's keep going with, in this vein. Apple looks good, probably going to the 150 level. Not too much to glean from that one. Amazon, very, very weak. Absolutely just weak after earnings never was able to get in gear and it just keeps going lower and it just keeps going lower and lower and potential is to move all the way to the other side of balance here at the high 2800s but we shall see but definitely one to keep an eye on it is relatively weak microsoft very very strong breakout that's good um netflix going nowhere nvidia Similar pattern to Facebook, also kind of going nowhere. And last but not least, Tesla. This is probably the most interesting chart in the whole Fangman Plus T. And I wanted to talk about this one specifically. And again, when, I, when you listen to what I'm about to say about Tesla, understand obviously that it's just one data point. And I do understand that Tesla is sometimes news driven. Uh, Tesla is sensitive to all different types of news that come in about the stock. It seems to have a lot more news on a regular basis, I've noticed, than other stocks. So I do keep that in mind. But there's one thing about the pattern in Tesla that I want to point out to you that I think is really, really fascinating. Look at the breakout or rather lack thereof uh, in today's session, which is Friday. So I'm gonna leave this like this. I'm gonna delete all this. And we're just really going to be looking at this section here. So notice that the stock has this consolidation here and on an increase in volume, which is good, it starts to break out. These are the three days here. It starts to break out, increase in volume and it balances. And we talked about this last week in terms of what went on with the, the butterfly I had, et cetera, that worked out well, um, but the stock balances. And on Thursday, you have this breakout. 
And it's a pretty legit breakout because again, volume kind of increases a bit, which is good. And what I found interesting about it is, uh, about the whole thing is the fact that it fails immediately. Like it doesn't completely break out above the prior high, but it definitely changes trend, which is very, very important, right? You definitely, you have a, tr uh, you have a, uh, you have a trend change here and it breaks out and then just kind of goes nowhere. And the reason I'm mentioning this specifically is because I'm worried, for lack of a better word, that this is the pattern that some breakouts may be taking uh, going forward. Like I just showed you a, a picture of Microsoft, which obviously looks great, but that doesn't mean it's going to keep going. And I'm not bearish here by any means. It's not like I'm um, you know, saying the sky is falling or whatever. Remember, everything that I do in my own trading in these videos as well is always trying to get people to think ahead. Think two steps ahead of what could happen. I've said over and over to all the folks that are in my weekly options advisory, every day probably, I mention this at least two or three times a week, that the money in the markets, the consistent money in the markets, is always made through loss avoidance. It is not really made in winning trades. Winning trades are easy, not losing is hard. Those are two completely separate things. If you think about it really, most trading education tries to teach you how to make winning trades, but very little of it teaches traders how to avoid losing trades and what are the pitfalls they should be looking at. And that's why I think these videos are valuable and that's essentially the essence, for lack of a better word, of what Shadow Trader is all about. This is what I teach, this is what I'm all about, this is what I do every single day in my own trading life, is I'm always looking at how I can avoid losses. And that doesn't mean by any you know, stretch of the imagination that I trade nervous or I trade you know, just very small, I don't put on size, it doesn't mean that at all. It's just that I'm constantly looking at every situation to try to, with, with sort of a pessimistic lens, to try to see what, could, what is wrong with it, what could potentially go wrong. Because essentially that's really how most people lose money, especially in the options market. Because in the options market, it's very, very easy to get sucked in by the shiny object of, for instance, uh, leverage, like where uh, you see options, I'll give you a very simplistic example, options that are 15 cents that might go to 80 cents, right? That's like a shiny object. That's like looking at you know, the, the enormous leverage power of options or things like that. Or could I put on this ratio spread for a credit, but they don't realize how much risk there is in that spread. Or could I put on this broken wing butterfly uh, because it's free, but but they don't realize that uh, you know, it's very, very narrow and it's never gonna make money and you're just gonna spin your wheels, things like that. So there's so many things that, that you really have to think about, especially with options trading because it's uh, you know, an extra level of, of, of complexity on top of equities, but basically that's it. Try your best to look for all of the situations where you might lose money and try and avoid those situations, do everything you can. So that's why I'm bringing you this Tesla chart and I'm just using it as an example to say, hey, you know, Yes, some of these Fangman Plus T stocks do look good, but look what Tesla did this week. Is there potential given where the S&P is, how the S&P is acting, kind of stuck up against the edge of that channel? To me, overbought in the short term, very little momentum, not really chugging higher, right? You know, chugging higher every day, but really kind of just sputtering. Is there potential that some of these bullish patterns fail? And last but not least, let's look at the market profile, as you can see right here on the screen in front of you. To the undiscerning eye, so to speak, this chart obviously doesn't tell you too much, and it's far beyond the scope of this video to get really into the details exactly of how market profile works. But what I want everybody to focus on in this particular chart is just how small it is. It's very, very squat. And I'll show you a picture in a second where we can look at Friday in relation to other days. But basically, it's a very, very small range, and there's a number of things going on in this chart that are for instance, very, very interesting. You have a poor high, tells you that the auction on Friday ended poorly. There was not the sort of whiz-bang uh, excess on top. It didn't end with a bang, it ended with a whimper. That usually means that prices are going to move away from the poor high first. And we made the poor high towards the end of the day, which is interesting. So look for that. There is potential that the market trades down on Sunday night. The next thing is notice how wide the point of control is here, very, very prominent, going uh, straight across uh, sideways, and then of course the range of the entire profile. Now, why is all of this important? It's really simple. It's just not the type of activity that you would like to see when a market makes all-time highs. And this is how I tie this back in with what I said at the beginning of the video where I said the majority of people 
who pay any attention to the markets. Just look at what I call top line figures. The Dow was up X, the S&P was up X, the NASDAQ was down Y, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we made new highs, everything is hunky-dory, it's all good. That tells you absolutely nothing about the markets. It tells you less than nothing. There's just, there's no information in there. There's no real market generated information other than price. Price is an advertising mechanism, as we know. It doesn't really tell you all that much, okay? So all I'm saying is this is not the type of day that you would want to see on a day when you make new all-time highs. If the market was stuck in a range, I would never ever look at this day as anything abnormal. I would just say, okay, no big deal. We just had a small range day. It's probably an inside day. Market is in balance. But the market made new all-time highs on Friday. And mind you, it's been doing this for some time now where the act action of basically the entire week has been mostly small range days. So the market keeps making incremental higher highs, but it has no expansion of range. Let's take a look at another uh, market profile chart on a slightly longer term. And that would be this one here. And I, this, the, really, the main reason why I wanted to show you this chart is just for the simple fact that I just wanted to point out how small this distribution is here. Now you can see it in relation to everything else. Here's a little bit of expansion of range, but and I say, but this is a big but. Those of you that are experts in the profile will know that the um, structure of this day was really bad. This was probably some of the poorest structure that we had. There were a lot of anomalies, et cetera. It was a bad structure day. But overall, most of the days here, as you can see, it's just a little bit bigger. And this day is just so small in terms of range. Uh, punctuating it. All right. Beyond that, look forward to if we were to get any kind of sell-off. This low here is weak. 44.30, that means that it'll probably get broken if it's tested. Why is it weak? It's because it's a double bottom. It's a very nuanced level. And this low is right to a POC. So basically you have like this, you have this low going right to a POC and you have this low going right to this low underneath it. Basically that is the essence of a weak low. And then here there is a double bottom as well that also could be considered weak as well because you have kind of an overnight session and an RTH session stopping at the same point. So those of you that follow my Peter's Pre-Market Perspective newsletter, which I urge all of you to take a free trial to, you can get an entire week free at our website. Just hit the uh, little card there that's showing up uh, in the video, take a five day free trial, and I'd be glad to share this information with you on a daily basis in the morning before the market opens. And that's about it for today. That's really all the information that I wanted to share with you. I do hope you enjoyed it. Again, Put something in the comments, if you can, about the uh, new setup. Also, one last thing. This is something you never hear from me, but given that I've put so much effort into setting up this whole thing here, you're going to start hearing this from now on. Please hit the like button. All of these years that I've been doing these videos, I've almost never asked anybody to click the like button. The YouTube algorithm seems to like that, and I figured to myself, since I'm putting in all this effort, I might as well see how many views I can get on these videos. So if you could, please click the like button, all right, and leave a comment uh, down below. Market next week. Here's what we need to be thinking about. Cautiously bullish still. Riding the top of the channel as I showed you in the S&P. Riding the top of the channel on very small body candles. Momentum is essentially pretty low. Confidence, I think, in the market is low. The NASDAQ 100 is starting to wake up a bit. Now the relative strength, relative weakness is shifting where we saw towards the end of the week. The NASDAQ coming alive, but keep that Tesla chart in mind. Will the NASDAQ stocks break out and take the QQQs higher, et cetera, and hold the S&P up, for lack of a better word, you know, everything will just stay hunky-dory? Or will we start to see a few more of those patterns that are very similar to Tesla, where you have a breakout and then kind of a, a, a backsliding failure uh, the next day? All right, that's all. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as always, I wish you good trading and good night.